Hello, I'm a vocal object four, and let's continue. The plan starts now. First, we attack head on. I'll follow your lead, Gladicus. Take that! I unleash a barrage of light blast as Sarah moves in with a sword art. Zephyr's right hand is the crux of all of his maneuvers. This will force him to choose between shielding himself from the art and deflecting the sword. Opting for the shield, Zephyr steadies his hand in front of him. My blast dissolved harmlessly on impact. My turn. Sarah leaps into position to unleash a flurry of strikes at Zephyr's flank. Starfall strike! Zephyr retracts the shield that had negated most of my blasts, swinging his right hand around to catch Sarah's light blade. Sparks fly as hand meets blade. But Sarah isn't rattled by the impact. She smoothly seeds. She smoothly segues into her net's attack. Meanwhile, I move into Zephyr's left flank to support Sarah with carefully timed diversionary arts. I blast the arm that is parrying Sarah's strikes, chipping away at its strength. Yeah. I hit. A thick black miasma pours out of the womb. Sarah slices into Zephyr's right arm. But dark magical energy quickly coalesces around the wound, sealing it. He can regenerate too? Clearly, Fulkengar's Light is our only hope of overcoming that level of magical energy. But for now, I must keep fighting alongside Sarah until the opportunity presents itself. You are the one who taught me how to fight. Use healing arts to mean mend any wounds, and well-timed arts to keep your foe off balance when it's ready to strike. Watch the fighting closely. Not just the target, try to figure out what your partner is trying to accomplish too. You have to find the right art to support the melee fighter's plan. We've been using the same pincer strategy for years. But that isn't going to cut it here. What am I supposed to do now? As I fight, my mind dredges up a memory from long ago. Now, if we're fighting a far stronger foe, we're never... We'll never be able to grind out a victory that way. So we need to come up with a plan for that sort of situation. Sky Splitter Comet. I notice Zephyr exhale a deep breath, as if he'd been sinking his breathing to Sarah's torrent of arts. That means, oh no! Just as Sarah moves into position to strike, Zephyr, his shoulder ready leveled at her, surges forward. Ah! What? He'd been focusing his magical energy on his shoulder, and the shockwave of the black impact sends Sarah tumbling back. That wasn't about dealing damage. That was about breaking her stance for what comes next. I can't let him follow through. I immediately began to cast an art. 
but Zephyr is already in motion. Without even glancing at Sarah as she flies through the air, Zephyr switches directions and launches into a charge at me. Man. Zephyr knows that I'm nowhere near as proficient in melee combat. He sees a chance to pick off the party healer, the one he views as an easier target. If he closes in on me, in a flash he's within striking distance. My best hope of defeating Zephyr at this range is completely non-existent. Well, uh, I leap to. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but Zephyr is far faster than I, and reorients himself with ease. Even with his death strike incoming, or maybe precisely because it is incoming, I remember. When you're clearly overmatched, plan A is to get out of there. As long as you're alive, you always have cards left to play. Escape is not an option here. Let's say you can't get away, and pulling off an impossible victory is your one and only option. Well, in that situation, in this situation, you gotta fight dirty, partner. Lippy, now. Heavenly feeders. Huh? As soon as Zephyr's foot lands on the point I'd lured him to, Libby triggers his binding glyph, vines of light entwined around his legs. We have him immobilized. Great job, Libby. Thanks. I hear Sarah call out from behind Libby's seal of light. Just as we rehearsed it. But despite the triumphant words, Lippy's face looks deeply pained. The art tugs at Zephyr's legs, slowing his movements. But he's not completely bound. Black energy, magical energy coils around Zephyr like a constrictor pushing against Lippy's vines of light. It's taking every ounce of Libby's strength to keep Zephyr from breaking through the seal. As we have planned, I will cast multiple seals to further allay his mobility. You must keep him within the area of effect until I can complete it. We're on it, Lippy. Come on, Sarah. Let's take him on one more time. Yeah, I have faith in you. Zephyr, it's not healthy to yell like that. Just isn't. We break into a run, surging the towards the final stage of the battle. Oh, oh golly, that cost 20! That... That's all right. Okay, okay. Who are, will we work with? Who will we work with? Who will we work with? Estelle. Or Estelis. Okay. <laughs> hmm. One out of one. Here we go. Okay. 
Fair enough. Take this. Well, guess what? I have over 100 hero stones, so I have plenty to take you out. What is it? Ow, golly, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna take several hero stones. Come on, come on, kill me. I got this. I'll die as many times as I gotta. This will, by no means, kill him, but it'll take a lot of his health. Blade Bloom! Ooh, it did take a lot out of his health. Uh, it just needed to take more. Okay, I see. <laughs> I have to get rid of the circles. No, I know. Well, let's see. Uh, I know I won't survive the attack. Man, I underestimate myself. Boom, ba da Boom, boom, ba da Hammer. I always love power hammer. Uh. Huh. Not the attack I expected him to do. All right. This is going actually really well, other than I died, like, in the first few minutes. <laughs> I believe you're going to need more than that. Ooh, we get to end it with Blade Blues! Awesome! I enjoy that attack too much. Uh. Boom! Oh! Ah! Uh. <laughs> Golly! God. Maybe this isn't gonna be as easy as I thought. Okay.
Okay. I see you. <laughs> I see you. Well, just don't forget. I got plenty of hero stones. Okay, what are you gonna do? Damn. I didn't expect him to heal himself like that. I really did not expect that. I mean, I'm okay. I'm actually okay with it. It makes the battle all the more interesting. What you got for me? Ow! Interesting. Huh. That strike was a lot weaker. Huh. Blade Bloom! Once more! Will you heal yourself again? Or will you stay down? He stood down. It was nice. Awesome. That was actually a cool battle. I like that. <laughs> I actually didn't mind dying there. In fact, I would be more upset if I didn't die. Lines of light wrap around Zephyr's left arm. That's three! We're using arts, swords, everything we have to hold Zephyr back, buying time until he gives us a, the opening. Right foot, left foot, left arm. The vines of light that have wrapped around each of them are sapping his immobility, slowing his movement. But the more the vines wrap around him, the more ferocious he becomes, lashing out like a cornered beast. Ah! We leap away from the deadly art he unleashes at us. Crash. Oof. Already off balance, Sarah still manages to block a slash from his right arm. Even at a distance, the attack pads a considerable punch. And so we dodge, parry, and block off his desperate barrage of attacks, slowly exhausting ourselves. Ah, oh, biscuits. <laughs> the fatigue is taking a particularly heavy toll on Lippy, who is struggling to maintain numerous binding arts at the same time. And let's met the next one the last. My eyes leap to Sarah's, and then Lippy's. Both are clearly aware of the direness of the situation. Without any conscious attempt to do so, the three of us have begun breathing in unison. It's now or never! Gotcha! Understood. On my mark? Lippy pours his remaining magical energy into his fourth and final binding arc. Sarah breaks into an all-out lunge at Zephyr. Choo! And I seize the opening Sarah has given me to activate Folkvenger, the goddess's light. Its hilt grasps tightly in my hand. I close my eyes and focus all my consciousness upon it. 
If I focus of all of my heart and soul into the image of the perfectly straight blade rising up from the hilt, I can feel the power converge upon it. Shin! I slice through the air with the blade, a glue with the blue light of magical energy. Now! I ready my blade and charge at him. We have to... We have to hit the source of his power. That right arm. Sarah accelerates her own charge to match mine, with the goal of keeping his right hand occupied. You haven't beaten me yet. The sound of clanging steel echoes off the walls. Only ten steps until I close the distance. With each step, my feelings swell. Full of only the desire to save my friend, I run. Is this the way he felt that day, when he tried to save her? This burning desire? Surging forward, praying your hand will reach theirs in time. Five steps to go. Darn it, I can't take much more. Smash. The rapid pace of the battle was too much for Sarah, and with one heavy strike, Zephyr ends it. She only narrowly avoids the follow-up killing strike from his claws. But Zephyr abandons his pursuit of her, and turns towards me instead, his right arm poised to strike. I'm triggering the fourth seal! A flurry of vines burst out of the glyph and wrap themselves around Zephyr's right arm. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Just two more steps. With all four of his limbs bound, he'll have no way to evade. With firm resolve, I make the final step. I lift the sword above my head, take aim at Zephyr's shoulder, and swing. A clean hit! You didn't need that arm? Clang. Oh, golly! You... You beast! You beast! Did you believe you'd landed a hit, you pathetic fool? I'm gonna have to fight you, aren't I? I'm gonna have to make sure you... You, 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 you're gone. Oh, God. As if your pitiful binds could stay my puppet's hand, the very conduit of my power. Zephyr stands before me. The vines of light that have been binding him have been shredded by his right hand. The same sweep of his hand has not Folgenger out of mine. The goddess's light is soaring through the air towards the chamber ceiling. My hand is empty. I continue lurching forward without the vessel in which I'd infuse so much of my power. Great Savior! I can hear the alarm in Lippy's voice. Huh. I know that Zephyr has synced his breathing to my movements. His right hand rests poised at his hip as he pours his magical energy into it. A punch from that fist here at point-blank range. And so it ends. And that's the end of the story! Goodbye, guys! That was a great game! We all died. The mocking tone is as clear as the words themselves. Suddenly his right hand is a blur, thrusting forward that explosive torrent of magical energy. The magical energy had surged out of his hand like a hurricane. And yet, my body shows no signs of the devastation Zephyr had anticipated. 
the shock at having somehow missed is clear upon his face. He gazes down at his hand. And there around his hand is mine. Ed caught his hand and dispersed the magical energy away. Yay! Hooray for actually trying to learn new things. That way uh, we don't completely get doomed in this fight. How many times have I seen you pull that trick when we fought together? That defensive art that slightly diverts the disperser disperses the magical flow of magical energy. Remember how it always went like this when we practiced? I'd close the distance, lurch forward to attack, and Zephyr would have made the strike and go in for the kill. Doing that is second nature to him, over and over again. Every single time, the timing was always the same. Even with Nighog controlling you. I had to bet that on some level, you were still the Zephyr I remember. And by knowing you, I could counter it. This is our chance, his arm. I grab his arm and clutch them tightly. I mean, I grab his arms and clutch them tightly. My hand burns from the exposure to the dark energy, but I clutch harder, pinning him down. Just as I do, a tiny flicker of light lands on his demonic right arm. Is it my imagination, or has the pain diminished considerably? I'm pretty sure that it has. Now! Falkenver is no longer within my reach. Zephyr had sent it flying when he knocked it out of my hands. But that's not strictly accurate. I didn't let it get knocked away. I entrusted it to another. You know, a person who actually knows how to use a sword. We would do this together. I made a promise. To you. Sarah. Thank you for all your faith in me. She grabs the hilt in midair, her eyes never leaving her target. Got it. She channels her heart and soul into the blade as she falls through the air. With this divine light. Heavenly Severance. Whoosh! A blinding light slices through the sky and down to the earth. The light emitted from the blade fills the chamber, purging away dark energy. Even the right arm that was the source of his deadly malice. Even the darkness that polluted his body with evil from within. All of it wrapped in binding light and made pure again. <laughs> Woohoo! We did it! I mean, we're not done, but, you know. No. The darkness comes at me from all directions. <laughs> no matter how far I travel through it, it feels as though I'm being dragged back a step for each step I take. There is only one light in this world. And all a man like me can do is keep trying to move towards it. I chase the light. I get dragged back. I chase it again. That is all I... Hmm? I can see a different light. <clears throat> what is this? Wait a minute. I know this light. 
I remember this light. I need to feel this light. I mean, I used to feel this light a long time ago. It's a healing light. Come back to us! Zephyrus! I do believe he's regained consciousness. Dots? And uh, now we have to do something about Kana still. His eyes are open. But the red tinge that once clouded them is gone. Thanks. Thank the heavens. He braids my gaze, his eyes traveling down his right arm. My hand. How? There at the end of it is the long lost hand from his envoy days. I remembered it well enough to heal it back to the way it used to be. I take the hand, still limping on the ground, to try to pull Zephyr up. But when I clutch Zephyr's hand, he doesn't clench my back, or clutch. His hand slips through my fingers and falls limp upon the ground once more. Zephyr. Why did you heal me? I don't have any right to be healed by you. I, I killed you, all of you, over and over again. We know you only did that for Kana. And that you had been deceived by that vile dragon. What are you talking about? I can't blame Nidhogg for that. <laughs> that was my own weakness. This all happened because I was weak. Ever since I was swallowed up. No. Since long before that. Weakness had taken root within me. My lack of strength. My lack of hope. The envy that I had held towards you. My weakness did this. My weakness invited Nidhogg in. I wanted to save her from that, that place, but... But my weakness led me astray, even from that. And the things I did to you, and for what? I was too weak to ever complete the ritual, fortunately for all. The despondency in his voice is painful to hear. I can't bear it. Thoughts. It's going to hurt him to hear it. 
But he needs to know the truth. It wasn't you that was stopping the ritual from succeeding. It was Kana. But that one sentence, everything seems to snap into place for him. That girl, she's strong. She's as strong as you are. I, I can't even hear her voice. I'm a sham, through and through. That's not... He shakes his head no. He doesn't want to hear it. I yearn for true strength, even as I waged my own weakness. And when I had a chance to get some sham power, I jumped at it. That's how all this happened. I couldn't accept my weakness, so I pr betrayed you all instead. Why would you want to save me? You are far too kind, and that's what hurts the most. Zephyr turns away, looking at him. I'm overcome by sadness. Even after all those battles, even after we saved him, his pain still remains. And so long as it does, I doubt we'll ever be able to return to the way we used to be. Nevertheless, no matter how much it hurts, I don't regret extending my hand to you. After all, there might still be some way back. And the only anger I bear in my heart is for the one that twisted my best friend's soul. That evil shadow that's always there, gnawing away at this world. I can't forgive it. I will never forgive it. It doesn't matter how many times you've killed me. It doesn't matter how much you hate yourself. The true enemy here isn't you. It's Nidhogg. I can still feel that slimy sensation creeping along my skin. I address the evil directly. I know that you're watching this. The sensation grows stronger still. I know that it will take more than that to defeat you. You're right there, aren't you? Don't run, mate. Don't run away from me, Nidhogg. Right then. A low hum begins to reverberate throughout this chamber. The darkness gathers into a fluttering cloud, and a bottomless well of inkly, inky blackness appears. Red eyes flicker at the front of the dark pool. Me, run away from you. I won't let you get away. No way am I letting you get away from me now. 
No, I won't be running away. Why would I need to flee from you? What is it that you think you're going to do to me? You can create a passage that a person can pass through, right? Then let's finish this. Open the path. I'll come to you. The red eyes at the heart of the darkness twist and shiver. I would be utterly delighted. As it cackles its high-pitched laugh, the mouth of darkness opens wide. Consider this your invitation. Join me in the void. Step right into my belly. The red eyes flicker out, leaving behind only the strange gate between us and itself. A silence falls over the chamber. We have no choice but to go through that gate. You and me, together. I may not know the right words with which to reach you. Nevertheless, there is something that I want you to understand. I know that there was no deep meaning to the names we gave ourselves. But I've grown to like them just as much as our real names. I want them to know the way I feel. You can call me by whichever name you like. But I'm going to call you Zephyr. The lives you've lived as Lilium have brought you nothing but torment. I want I never want to say that name again. A name is just a name. It changes nothing. I'm not so I'm not saying you should forget about that time. I know you couldn't, even if you wanted to. But that's what I want to call you. <laughs> Me too. I mean, the name Zephyr. It conjures up a lot of happy memories. You're a great friend to us. My loyalty remains entirely unchanged. So long as I draw a breath, know that I stand beside you, Master Zephyr. We all feel the same way. We each look at him in the eyes, delivering our message straight to the soul that lurks behind them. We're gonna go get Kana now, Zephyr. We're you're going into that? His eyes fall upon Nighod's gate. Huh. Well, knowing you, you might even pull it off. I shake my head at Zephyr's quietly mumbled comments. No, not by ourselves, we won't. Everything that happened to it today, every challenge that came before, I never would have been able to surmount them without the help of Lippy and Sarah. There are things I can't accomplish alone. And there are things only you can achieve. We need your help, Zephyr. If you can't do it now, then fine. But I know you'll come to help when you can. After all, we're partners, right? 
And that is all I can do for you. I don't need to pull you up. I know that you'll find your way back to your feet. I just need to make it clear that I believe in you. So I'm going on ahead. I'll meet you on the other side. See you then, Zephyr. Zephyr doesn't respond. He doesn't lift his downcast eyes. But if I know him... Gladicus. Thanks, Sarah. I'm okay. I know how tough Zephyr is. I'll be looking forward to see you, seeing you soon, Master Zephyr. Alright, let's go! There are still two things we need to do. But I'll know him. Come. We don't look back as we step through the gate together. A new location to the distant end is now available. Oh, golly, that was so nice. Yay. Also, it was really long. Golly, that was long. Um, this is gonna be a beefy episode, uh, for sure. But, oh, man. Yay, we got Z for back. He's... He's reasonably depressed. Anyone would be depressed in his situation. Um, and yeah, we're off to get Kana. So, I'll see you guys in the next video, and bye.